Hello everyone. So I am Lindon P. Rigodon, or simply just call me Sir Don. I will discuss today the revised corporation code. So medyo mahaba, so yung highlights lang yung i-discuss natin. So credits to Sir Roderick Salazar. So provided below is the link to his uh, website if you want to read more. So the revised corporation code Ang, ang date of activity, uh, effectivity niya is on February 23, 2019. So simply last year. So the old corporation code was repealed and the revised corporation code act 11.232 or also known as the revised code corporation code or the law became effective. So ang, next, ang question ngayon is why? Bakit? So, bakit pinalitan yung revised code? So, in its rep uh, repealing clause, the revised co corporation code expressly repelled the 1980 corporation code or the old corporation code which had no amendments for almost 39 years. So, uh, since 1980 pa yung old corporation code. So, almost 40 years walang nabago. So the old corporation code has over years have been deemed not attuned to the changing business environment and requirements. Thus, there is a need for a change. So facilitation and easing up of procedural requirements for incorporating corporations and extension of corporate existence to maintain business continuity and stability provides a significant assistance to investors and the public. The requirement for more consciousness about the compliance with a good corporate governance framework for corporations bodes well for an ever-growing Philippine economy. So from 1980 to 2020, so marami nang nabago, kaya uh, kailangan i-revise yung old code. So ang tanong is, lahat ba ng sections ng old code is nabago ba or Konti lang yung nabago. So there are also some sections that have been remained unchanged. So ano yung hindi nabago? So first, ang definition of corporation. So as is pa rin ang definition of corporation. The classes of corporation, the types of corporation, same pa rin. The classification of shares, so common shares and preference shares and all other shares. The management structures for corporations, so from the board of directors to the top management to the shareholders to the management, the corporate powers and capacity, the dissolution process, mergers and consolidation process, and of course, the licensing of foreign corporations. So, bali, ito lang yung hindi nabago sa revised corporation code. So, ano naman ang nabago? So, si Sir Roderick, uh, classify yan into five categories yung mga changes. So, yung una, is in doing business. Pangalawa, process improvements in corporate activities. Third, corporate continuity and stability. Fourth, corporate governance, directors, and officers' accountability. Five, SEC jurisdiction and authority expansion. So, lima. So, ang unang significant change is contributions to ease in doing business. So, if you notice, one of the platform of the current administration is ease in doing business. So, madali nang apply or gumawa ng business ngayon. So, isa sa pinaka- nabago sa revised corporation code is ito. Partnership associations or corporations singly or jointly with others but not more than 15 may now be incorporators. But if singly or to be a one-person corporation or also known as OPC, incorporator must be a natural person, trust, or an state. Kasi dati, uh, Incorporators must be a natural person, dapat tao. So, bawal ang partnership or ang corporation gumawa ng corporation. 
to be an incorporator, dapat natural person. Yun, yun, yun yung sa old code. However, in the revised corporation code, they can now be an incorporator. However, para maging one person corporation, the incorporator must be natural person. So, i-discuss ko later in details ano, ano itong one person corporation. Uh, second, no more residency requirement for incorporators and directors. So, sa old code, uh, requirement do na dapat majority of the directors or incorporators must be, a, uh, must be resident here in the Philippines. However, tinanggal na sa revised corporation code. Another, professionals or partnerships or associations organized for the practice of profession are not allowed to organize as a corporation. So, bale, yung mga accountants, doctors, dentists, at iba pang professionals, they are not allowed. So, bawal silang gumawa ng corporation. Pero kung, kung gusto nila uh, gumawa ng corporation, pwede lang Siguro kung gusto nilang mag-trading, mag-buy and sell, but as to, to practice their profession, bawal. So, pwede lang silang mag-gumawa ng partnership to practice their profession, but not a corporation. Also, in the revised corporation code, so there are also some changes in the articles of incorporation. So, so ang corporate name, the corporate name must be distinguishable from a name that is already reserved or registered for the use of another corporation or is not protected by law or is not contrary to existing law, rules, and regulations. Then, requirement na rin ngayon na dapat may online verification. For one-person corporation or OPC, the letters O P and C must be indicated either below or at the end of its corporate name. So, for example, Huan Corporation, comma, OPC, or sa baba. Another, uh, principal office address now allows general reference to city or municipality and not a specific office address compared sa old law. Ito ang next, uh, isa din sa pinaka-significant changes, ang corporate term. Now with a perpetual existence unless it's AOE or artificial, uh, our articles of incorporation provides otherwise. So dati dapat uh, i-indicate ng incorporators kung ilang years sila mag exist Kung hindi man ma-indicate, so ang um, default na years is 50 years. However, sa revised corporation code, so may perpetual existence na. So, meaning, uh, parang may forever. So, hanggang buhay pa ang corporation, so pat, uh, patuloy siyang mag-operate. So, for existing corporations, so yung mga corporations before the code was revised, they will be automatically now have perpetual existence so, uh, unless of course hindi gusto ng mga stockholders so they can notify the sec na i-retain nila yung remaining uh, terms of the corporation uh, moreover the effect of non use of corporate charter so from the date of incorporation failure to organize or commence business will now have be five years. So, dati sa so old code, uh, two years lang. So, pag hindi pa nakastart yung operation ng corporation, so, i-revoke yung certificate of registration. So, nasabi ko na to dati, incorporators may be partnership, associations, or corporations. Directors and uh, trustees, so, no more minimum number of five. So, dati, uh, for the board of directors or for the board of trustees, they must be at least five but not more than 15 yung board. However, since pwede na ngayon ang one-person corporation, so pwede na rin isa na lang ang director or trustees. 
if a corporation is vested with public interest, meaning uh, affected, affected yung public, so may requirement na at least 20% of the board must be independent. So meaning independent of management and free from any business or relationship that could affect exercise of independent judgment. So para objective and free from bias yung director. Uh, another significant changes in the revised code is this, no more required minimum capital stock except if required by special law. Wala na rin yung 25, 20, 25%, 25% requirement kasi dati uh, 25% of the authorized capital must be subscribed and 25% of the subscribe must be paid. So wala na tong requirement ngayon. Another treasurer must be a resident. And then, allowed na rin ang electronic filing in accordance with SEC rules. So, for the one type, one person corporation, so ito yung concept niya. Ito yung corporation with a single stockholder. Meaning, isa lang yung shareholder. Wala nang iba. However, requirement na dapat stock corporation. COPC, meaning bawal ang non-stock corporation. Meaning, stock corporation, they are created for profit. So, one-person corporation should be created for profit. Bawal for non-profit corporation. So, sino ba ang pwede ma, uh, who may form a uh, one-person corporations? So, as mentioned earlier, only natural persons, trust, or an estate may form OPC. So, bawal yun. Bawal again yung partnership corporation. Banks, quasi-banks, pre-need trust, insurance, public, and publicly listed companies, and non-chartered GOCCs may not incorporate an OPC because these companies have kanang responsibility to the public. Kaya bawal silang maging OPC. Also, professionals wanting to exercise their profession again cannot form an OPC. However, foreigners and non-residents may form an OPC. How much capital? So, pareho lang kanina, no minimum authorized capital except as otherwise required by special law. So, paano ba i-file yung OPC? So, need pa rin yung articles of incorporation. Pero hindi na need yung bylaws. Name should indicate OPC either by below or at the end of the corporate name. Who constitutes the OPC? So the single stockholder shall be the sole director and president of the OPC. Siyempre, siya, siya, uh, siya, siya yun lang yung director. So siya yun lang yung stockholder. So siya lang din ang director. Within 15 days from issuance of certificate of incorporation, the one-person corporation shall appoint a treasurer, corporate secretary, and others, other officers as necessary, and SEC is notified of appointments within five days. So, syempre, hindi naman kaya ni single stockholder na siya, siya lang yung mag-manage yung business. So, kailangan pala niya ng treasurer, secretary, and other officers. Kaso, uh, pinagbabawal ng SEC na, da, na si single stockholder at siya rin yung secretary. So, single stockholder cannot be the corporate secretary at the same time. However, he can be a treasurer provided he posts a bond to the SEC in a sum required by SEC with a written undertaking to faithfully administer the office's funds and to invest and disburse the same according to the Articles of Incorporation. Another requirement for one-person corporation is nominee and alternate nominee stockholders are required to be designated who shall take the place of the single stockholder as director and manage the corporation's affair in the event of death of the single stockholder. Kasi nga, siya lang mag-isa, so paano kung may mangyari sa single stockholder natin. 
So, may papalit sa kanya si nominee. Then, kung hindi available si nominee, yung alternate nominee. For the proper succession of the corporation para hindi apektado yung operation. Uh, what is the liability of the one-person corporation? So the sole or the single shareholder has the burden of proving that the OPC was adequately financed and that the property of the OPC is independent of the stockholder's personal property. Otherwise, the sole shareholder shall be jointly or severely liable for the debts and other liabilities of the OPC. So if you still remember the concept of corporation, the shareholder is liable only to his investment or to his capital invested, meaning his personal assets shall not be held liable in case the corporation is bankrupt or in financial difficulty. However, since siya lang mag-isa yung uh, shareholder, uh, he will be liable or severely liable for the debts and liabilities of the OPC in case inadequate yung finances ng OPC. So dito, piercing of the, uh, the principle of piercing the bill of corporate fiction applies. Conversion from an ordinary corporation to an OPC. Meaning ordinary corporation, yung, uh, yung more than one yung shareholder. So when a single stockholder acquires all of the stocks of, a, of an ordinary stock corporation, he may apply for conversion into an OPC. So bali, for example, an existing corporation has five shareholders and then five shareholders A, B, C, D, and E. However, and then A acquires all the shares of B, C, D, and E. So ultimately, he now owns the company. So since he is the only shareholders now, shareholder now, uh, he can apply for the corporation to be converted into an OPC. So the, op the OPC becomes legally responsible for the latter's outstanding liabilities as of the date of conversion. So how about from OPC to ordinary? So pwede ba yun? Of course, pwede. So from single stockholder, uh, he decided to kanang gusto niyang may additional shareholders na kasama, um, na kasama so the OPC can apply for uh, amendments of the uh, Articles of Incorporation to be converted into Ordinary Stock Corporation. Effect of death of single shareholder. So what if mamatay yung single shareholder natin? So as required earlier, the nominee or the alternate nominee transfers the shares to the duly designated legal heir or state within seven days from receipts of either an affidavit of heirship or self-adjudication executed by the sole heir. Then the heir shall notify the SEC of the decision to either wind up and dissolve the OPC or to convert into an ordinary stock corporation. So, yun yung pinaka, uh, pinakauna na significant changes. The second significant change uh, is process improvements in corporate activities. So, in-improve yung operation ng corporation. So, stockholders or members meeting. So, written notice of regular meetings may be sent through the means of communications provided by bylaws by electronic mail or other sec allowed manner. So dati dapat required yung physical appearance ng member or stockholder. Ngayon, marami ng means para maka meeting. So notice of meeting is now required to be accompanied by so dapat yung notice may agenda, may proxy form to be submitted to the secretary prior to the meeting. So when attendance, participation, and voting are allowed by remote communication or in absentia, the requirements and procedures to be followed when a stockholder or members elects either option. And when the meeting is for the election of directors or trustees, 
the requirements and procedures for nomination and election. Third, significant change, corporate continuity and stability. So perpetual existence, as I've said, is ato sa pinaka major changes. Corporations now have perpetual existence, meaning uh, perpetual uh, forever, or unless the AOI, the, the AOI provides otherwise. Revival of corporate term. A corporation whose term has expired may apply for a revival of its corporate existence. So, for example, yung remaining term niya dati is one year na lang, so he can apply for revival. So, pwede na siyang mag-exist uh, for perpetuity. Election of replacement directors and trustees. So, when vacancy due to term expiration, the election should be held no later than the day of such expiration. For, of course, for continuity and stability. So, dapat walang mawawala na director. Election of an emergency director or emergency board. So, is now allowed when there is no quorum in a board of directors due to resignation, death, or disqualification. Corporations are empowered to enter into partnerships, joint venture, or any commercial agreements. Uh, the fourth significant change is the introduction of a new concept and recurring team, uh, the term corporate governance. So it strengthens minority protection and enhances directors and officers' accountability. So uh, this concept is directed at corporations vested with public interest, of course, to protect the public such as listed companies or publicly listed companies, banks, quasi-banks, pawn shops, money service business, pre-need, trust, and insurance companies, and other financial intermediaries. So these are some concepts of the corporate governance. So CSEC is granted authority to promote corporate governance and the protection of minority investors through, among others, the issuance of rules and regulations consistent with international best practices. Uh, SEC then pwede siyang mag-require na those board members shall uh, attend seminars or trainings about corporate governance. Independent directors, so uh, required by SEC for corporations vested with public interest. So, na discuss ko na to earlier, ano yung independent director? Yung hindi bias, yung objective. So, the revised corporation also um, remind the directors of their duties to the corporation. Compliance officer is also required for corporations with public interest. They also add grounds for disqualifications of directors and trustees and officers in case some directors will commit fraud or any other um, bad actions. Total compensation of each director, especially those vested with public interest, are required to be disclosed. So, dapat alam ng public kung ilan ang compensation ng director. They also identifies and penalize new offenses. Retaliation against whistleblowers. So, whistleblowers are those people that will disclose the bad habits or activities of a corporation. So, in the revised code, the whistleblowers are protected against those people in case the whistleblower will be threatened. So, baka tinatakot yung whistleblower, so ayaw na lang mag-blow mag ng mga bad activities ng company. So, they are protected. So, mapipenalize yung nagtetpeted ng mga tao. There are reporter requirements. Annual submission is also 
specifically stated. Last but not the least, so the SEC jurisdiction and authority expansion. So the SEC now has visitorial powers over all corporations. So they will examine and inspect records, regulate and supervise activities, enforce compliance and impose sanctions. They may also revoke so bawabawiin nila yung certificate of incorporation if corporation refuses or obstructs the SEC. So in case ayaw nilang or haharangan nila ang SEC para mag-examine or mag-inspect sa kanilang company, so pwedeng bawiin ng SEC ang kanilang certificate. The SEC has also authority over certain intra-corporate disputes, especially those corporations, again, with public interest. A transmittal of evidence to the Department of Justice, SEC fiscal autonomy under the revised corporation code. So you, you can read more of this topic on the link provided below. No court below the Court of Appeal shall have jurisdiction to issue a restraining order preliminary injunction. So that would all uh, that would be all for this video. So if in case you have questions, so feel free to comment below or you can read and click the link for the website. Thank you for watching.